Now I want to talk a bit about, well, okay, well, how, how do we actually use this thing? And, and what are some of the problems and integrals that we can solve using it? So, well, what, what did we see previously? We saw that, um, we saw that if you integrate minus infinity to infinity, delta of x, dx, well, this is, just, this is just some normalized Gaussian in, in some limit, so this is just equal to 1. Okay, great. Well, what's another example? Well, we could do, say, and I'll, I'll, and I'll throw an easy one at you, 2 times delta of x. Okay. Um, well, you know, we, we know how to do integrals like this. You just pull out the 2. We know integral delta of x is 1, so 2. Easy. Okay, now what about a, a little bit weirder example. So what about integral minus infinity to infinity x squared minus 1 times delta of x dx. What's this thing going to be equal to? Well, let's plot it. Let's try and think about this graphically. So we know that our delta function our delta function is just some function, or we're treating it like some function that's zero everywhere, and then at, z at zero, spikes up. Okay, that's delta of x. What about x squared minus one? Well, x squared minus one, I'll use green for this, x squared minus one is a function that kind of looks like this. So it's a parabola shifted down by one. Okay. So what, what and so we're integrating the product of these two functions here. So what happens when we multiply them together? Well, uh, the delta function is zero everywhere. Uh, everywhere off of the origin is equal to zero. But at exactly zero, what happens? It, well, at exactly zero, the delta function contributes. So what, what's happening exactly at zero? Exactly at zero, uh, this function right here, this parabola is equal to minus one. So the way that we evaluate this integral is, is exactly like that. We, we say that, okay, well, the only contribution, I mean, so this, this function doesn't contribute at all except for when the delta function is equal to zero. So we're effectively just multiplying this delta function by that constant. And so we see that this whole integral comes out to minus one. And so, the, and so this is actually part of a, a more general property, which I'm gonna state down here. So really, what, really what's the more general rule? The general rule is that if you're integrating some function f of x and you're multiplying it by a delta function, then what's this gonna be equal to? This is gonna be equal to f at the value where the delta function peaks, zero. And I'll circle this because this is, this is an important, important property. So just, just to recap, what, what are we really saying here? We're saying that uh, our delta function, really what it's doing is it's saying, all right, I don't care about anything except for when the argument's equal to zero. And when the argument's equal to zero, we're picking out that value of the function f of x. So in, in this case, for example, with this parabola, our delta function is saying, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to ignore the entire parabola except for that point at x equals zero. That point I'm going to pull out. All right, and that, uh, that's the point I'm going to extract using the delta function. Uh, and so, so that that's that's kind of how I think about the delta function sometimes is as is as picking out these these this value right here when x is equal to zero from this function f of x. So here, here here's a here's a good property. Let's try and apply it a bit more to some other problems. So I'll I'll just rewrite it here at the top. So the rule is that uh, integral minus infinity to infinity f of x delta of x dx is equal to f of zero. Okay, great. So let's look at some examples of this. So one, one example that we could consider is uh, integrating from minus infinity to infinity e to the x delta of x dx. Okay, well, what, what do we know? We know that this delta function is really just picking out 
to the point where this function is equal to zero. So that's gonna be e to the zero, also known as one. Okay, easy enough. What, what about another example? And I'll, I'll do something a little sneaky on this one. What about integral minus infinity to infinity sine of x times, and I'll do something a little different now, x minus two dx. Okay, well, what, 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 what have we actually done here? What we've done is we've shifted where this delta function shoots up to infinity. We, we've shifted to the point two, uh, x equals two, because at x equals two, this thing goes to zero. So what should this thing be equal to? Well, now the only contribution is gonna come from x equals two. So this whole integral now is gonna be equal to sine of two, because we're just picking out that point when x equals two from this function sine of x. And, and some people some people write this more gen like some people like to rewrite this property up here up here more generally as integral minus infinity to infinity f of x delta of x minus x naught so some arbitrary shift in x dx is equal to f of x naught and that's going to be that's going to be one of our core delta function properties all right, um, let's look at another example. So, so far we've been integrating over the, all of the real line, but what, what happens when we don't? So for example, what happens if we integrate z from minus infinity to four of some, some arbitrary function, let's say g of x times delta of x minus three dx. Okay, well, what's happening here? And the, why, why don't we why don't we think about this graphically? So, if our delta function, so our what's our what's our delta function here? Our delta function is some peak at x equals three, and our function g of x that that's some arbitrary curve that's doing you know it's doing doing here here, here it looks kind of like a sine or something, but it's doing it's doing something that you know it isn't super important. What is important? is the range over which we're integrating. So here we're integrating what from minus infinity, so minus infinity all the way up to x equals four. So what happens when we do this integral? Well, we know everything outside of the delta function is equal to zero. So all of this contribution is equal to zero, this contribution is equal to zero, and all of this contribution out here even if we had included, it would be equal to zero. So really, this this integral right here is just exactly the same as integrating over the real line. Because all that really matters is that we're including in our domain the point that the delta function actually cares about, the point where the delta function peaks up. So this this integral right here is exactly the same as something which includes other points that we don't care about which is in turn equal to, well, what's this doing? Delta function's picking out three from this function, so g of three. Great. Okay, what about um, another example? Or, or I guess I'll say, well, what, what about the following change? What if instead, and I'll draw this down here, what if instead we integrated from minus infinity, to, uh, not to infinity, to four again, g of x, but we had, uh, but instead we had delta of x minus five dx. Well, what, what's happening now? Now, now this peak, which was originally over here, has been shifted such that now it's it's out here. It's outside the bounds of integration, and so now the the, the area that we're integrating over only contributes zero because we're no longer including that peak from the delta function. So this whole integral now, because, because this isn't a part of the domain, it's gonna be equal to zero. Uh, so so these, these are really the, the, core, the, core, the core properties of the delta function, or are really the core examples that you might end up seeing in, in practice. I mean, the first thing to know is that, okay, if you're integrating 
um, some function multiplied by the delta function, well, all that the delta function doing is picking out a single point from that function and returning that as the value of the integral. And the other thing is that um, depending on where you're integrating from, you have to make sure that uh, the only contribution that's going to come to your integral is going to come from the points where this delta function is peaked. So if our bounds of integration don't include that, uh, then the integral is going to be zero. Otherwise, it's going to be some, some, some finite value given by um, the function at that value. So I think this is all I want to do here to uh, sort of introduce the delta function. Uh, in the next video, I'll go a bit more into some properties and do some more examples with those.